हेलो एवरी वन लेट्स डू टूडे मैथमेटिक्स पेपर थ्री कोर ऑफ कैम्ब्रिज आई जी सी एस सी दिस इज स्पेसिमन पेपर फ्रॉम एग्जामिनेशन ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी कोड इज जीरो फाइव जीरो जीरो थ्री एंड टाइम इज टू आवर्स सो यू कैन जस्ट चेक द इंस्ट्रक्शन हियर यू कैन टेक स्क्रीन शॉट द मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट थिंग हियर इट इज लाइक Uh, give non exact numerical answers correct to three significant figures or one decimal place for angles in degrees unless a different level of accuracy is specified in the question and for pi use either your calculator or 3.142 so total marks of this paper is 104 so you all know that marks will be written at the end of each question so let's start so question 1 uh, the table shows part of bus time table here is the bus time table uh, part 1 yana leaves home at 10:50 she takes 14 minutes to walk to the bus stop at city gate so city gate is here um, at what time does she reach uh, the bus stop so she takes 14 minutes so she leaves at 10:50 so 10:50 plus 14 minutes plus 14 here when you add it will be 11 1064 so this is more than 60 minutes so minus 60 uh, then we will have 4 minutes here so that means this 60 will be added here to 10 here so it will be 11 and this is 4 so she will reach bus stop at 1104 part 2 uh, she gets on bus next bus at city gate and arrives kingswood park at what time does the bus arrive at kingswood park uh, so uh, she gets on the next bus at city gate so this is city gate and she arrives at 1104 so that means she can take this bus at 11 uh, 12 and say what time does she this bus this bus arrive at kingswood so from city gate this bus arrives at kingswood park at 1150 so this is 1150 Number three, work out how many minutes the bus takes to get from City Park to Kingswood Park. From City Park to, uh, sorry, from City Gate to here, Kingswood Park. So it started at eleven twelve. So we need time from eleven twelve to eleven fifty. So this is twelve to fifty. So you can see fifty minus twelve, it is thirty eight. minutes so 38 minutes that will be the final answer so we just need the difference here from 11 12 to 11 50 uh, part b ivan walks 1.5 kilometers from his home to kingswood park he takes 20 minutes work out ivan's average speed in kilometer per hour so our answer should be in kilometer per hour so what are we given here uh, this is distance distance is 1.5 kilometers and time is 20 minutes but we need in hours so we can divide this by 60 uh, so this is time in hours now speed we know that the formula of speed is um, it is distance divided by time so distance is 1.5 divided by 20 over 60 so this can be written as 1.5 times 60 over 20 you can use calculator so this comes out to be 4.5 so your final answer is 4.5 kilometers per hour part c and uh, the scale drawing shows a map of kingswood park there are two straight paths and one circular path so we are given different paths here in this diagram the scale represents 1 cm 
as 200 meters so you can see the diagram here so these are the two straight path and this is the circular path and scale we are given here uh, part one yana walks along the straight path from east gate to west gate work out the distance she walks give your answer in kilometers and so the distance uh, she walked from east gate to west gate west and east gate this is the path so we need to uh, measure this length by the ruler so as you can see this is approximately 11 centimeters so this is 11 centimeters so as we are given the scale scale is 1 centimeter 1 centimeter represents 200 meters and this is 11 so 11 centimeter will represent how much so just cross multiply then you will see here x times 1 equals to 11 times 200 so x is 11 times 2 is 22 2200 meters but we need answer in kilometers so divide this by 1000 that answer will be in kilometer which is 2.2 kilometers so final answer is 2.2 kilometer is already written so you just measure the distance and convert the scale according to the given scale part 2 measure the bearing of south gate from north gate so there is always clue you need to uh, measure it from north so always go for the from north so from is north uh, from the north gate so we'll go to the north of the north gate and then we need uh, the bearing of south gate south gate is here so we are going to measure this angle from here to this one so we can use protractor for that so let's just put here uh, on the central point like this on the north arrow then you see this angle is here 150 degrees so this is 150 degrees so measure of bearing of south gate from north is 150 degrees now part 3 the entrance P to a children's play area is 500 meters from north gate on bearing of 195 so again bearing is on north gate at 195 so now we are going again back to the same point here from the north it is 90 195 so from this we need to uh, draw an angle of 195 so because this is up to 80 so but we need 185 from here so 150 we already have here so to get 195 and so if we add 45 then you will get 195 so if we make angle of 45 from here towards this side this will give us uh, angle of uh, uh, what we can say 195 so from here 45 150 we already have we are adding 45 here so this is 45 here so i'll draw a dotted line here like this so now bearing is complete from here to here it is now 195 but we are given here 500 meters also so this is bearing of 195 is done but we need point p at bearing uh, at a distance of 500 meter 500 meters means from the scale it will be 5 centimeters so with the ruler we will take where it is 5 centimeters from here Oh, actually not 5 centimeter 500 meters uh, we will see how much is this five uh, we are given here um, the scale is 1 centimeter equals to 200 meters 
and then 500 meters will be how many centimeter if you cross multiply so it will be actually x times 200 equals to 500 and x will be 500 over 200 so which is 2.5 centimeter so we need distance of 2.5 centimeters from this you can use this ruler here so 2.5 is somewhere here so this is our point p so this is the position of point p at 195 from the north gate okay so this is point p here so we are done with the third part part four uh, Yvonne runs once around the circular path calculate the distance so now the circular path circular path is this so for that we need uh, the circumference the distance is the all this circumference so the circumference is pi times d so pi times d now what is the diameter so let's check what is the diameter here so diameter is approximately six centimeters so i'm taking six here so pi times six and uh, this comes out to be uh, you can directly use calculator three seven six nine nine here so we can write down this answer the circumference will be three seven six nine point nine nine meters question number two the diagram shows five number cards so you can see there are five number cards here put two cards side by side to show uh, a two digit number that is a multiple of seven so two digits number of multiple of seven if you look around these numbers so you can see this is uh, 21 is multiple of seven then there is 28 multiple of seven so we can write any of these numbers in this here so let me write down here 21 then two uh, digit square number so if we look around here the square numbers will be 1 and 6 it is 16 and also uh, 8 and 1 81 so this is square of 4 and this is square of 9 so these are square numbers so we can put any of the numbers here so let's put 16 here then number 3 2 digit cube number so cube number if we look around here the cube number will be 2 and 7 27 which is cube of 3 so 27 will go in this box number 4 a 2 digit prime number so if you look around here so there are many prime numbers here so that may be we are just using those numbers from there it may be 16, uh, 17 it may be 61 it may be 67 or 71 so we are taking we have taken all these numbers from these number cards here uh, so we can write any of the numbers here let's write 67 here now B part insert one pair of brackets into the statement to make it correct so if we look around here to make the statement correct so we can use trial and error method here uh, so if we take bracket here so that means 3 plus 2 5 5 minus 5 0 it will make 0 here so this is 72 uh, sorry 42 which is multiple of 7 so it means like this thing if we take this one here so that will be 7 times so this is 5 uh, plus 3 5 plus 3 is 8 minus 2 8 minus 2 is 6 so 7 times 6 is 42 so bracket will go here okay now uh, part c write down 60 as product of its prime factors so 60 we will make the prime factors we are just going to take prime numbers here let's start with 2 60 divided by 2 is 30 again by 2 15 3 times 5 
1. So, 60 need to be written as prime factors. 2 times 2 times 3 times 5. We will multiply all these. So, this can be written as 2 power 2 times 3 times 5. So, this is our final answer. We can put it here. I'm sorry, 2 power 2, 5. So, part 2, find lowest common multiple that is LCM of 36 and 60. So, 36 and 60, uh, we are going to take prime numbers here. Uh, that will divide both of them first. 2, 36 divided by 2 is 18. This is 3, again by 2, 9, 15. Now these two numbers both are not divisible by 2. So we will take 3 times 3 is 9, 3 times 5 is 15. Continue dividing unless you get 1 down there. So that's it. So LCM will be 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 times 5. So, when you multiply this, 2 times 2, 4 times 3 is 12. 12 times 3 is 36 times 5 is 180. You can use calculator for that. So, this is 180. So, now next is find the value of cube root of 0 0.729. So, we can use calculator for that. Uh, it is... Uh, I hope that you can see it properly. So, cube root shift then down is cube root of uh, 0 0.729. 0 0.9. So, you can directly write down answer here 0 0.9. Question number 3. Joel spins a fi uh, fair 5 sided spinner number 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. Write down the probability that the spinner lands on an odd number. So we need the probability of odd number. So how many odd numbers are there? Let's see. We have 3 and 5. So odd numbers are 3 and 5. So how many are they? They are 2 out of how many? 5. So answer is 2 over 5. Now probability of prime numbers. So we need to look how many prime numbers are there. There is 2, there is 3 and there is 5. So prime numbers are 2, 3 and 5. So they are 3 in number 3 over 5. So 3 over 5 will go here. Uh, the number 7. As you can see, there is no number 7. Numbers are up to 6. So, probability of getting 7 is 0 over 5, which is 0. So, answer will be 0. Part B. Uh, the table shows the result of his first 20 spinners. So, we are given number and then the frequency. These are numbers on the spinner. Write down the mode. Now, we need to write down the mode. What is mode? Mode is a number with highest frequency with the highest frequency highest frequency here it is 6 and the number that one is 4 so our answer will be 4 calculate the mean now to calculate the mean so we see like number 2 is coming how many times 3 3 is coming twice so we are going to take multiply them 2 times 3 3 times 2 plus 4 times 6 we are multiplying them 5 times 4 plus 6 times 5 divided by how many are they in total if we are given here 20 spinners so 20 spin sorry so it's 20 so when you calculate this one I have already calculated this when you do this 2 times 3 plus 3 times 6 uh, 2 you get here 86 divided by 20 so this comes out to be 4.3 so final answer is 4.3 number 3 part 3 I mean uh, Joel wants to draw a pie chart to show the results on table show the sector angle for the number 2 is 54 so to find out 
so for the number 2 number 2 is here so the frequency here it is 3 so for the number 2 frequency is 3 so this is 3 out of 20 and we need angle that is out of 360 so this is gone 18 18 times 3 is 54 so that's our answer that we need to show that it is 54 now part b find the sector angle for number 6 so let's see number 6 so for the number 6 the frequency is 5 so 5 is out of 20 again so 5 over 20 times 360 again uh, this is 18 18 times 5 is 90 so 90 degree is our final answer so now number C uh, Joel asked 30 students to guess the number that spinner will land on next and uh, this pie chart shows the results you see this is the pie chart we have spinner lands on 6 uh, lands on 2 3 4 and 5 uh, so the question says like here so part 1 of this question is the sector angle for number 6 is 168 how many students guessed the number 6 so we need to find out uh, how many students that means number of students who guessed uh, number 6 so we are given this angle is 168 degrees so uh, let's say the number of students so let's say that number of students who guessed number 6 is n so this n is out of total 30 students so n over 30 times we need to find out out of 360 so times 360 and this is given to us 168 so we can just find out angle uh, I mean number of students n from here 168 times 30 over 360 we can use calculator for that uh, so this is uh, 168 times 30 this is divided by 360 so answer is 14 so number of students is 14 okay now part 2 find the percentage of the students who guessed a number less than 5 so now we are looking for the percentage of students who guessed less than 5 so if we go back to the pie chart here so less than 5 less than 5 is all this section from here up to this so let's say what angle is this we can use protractor for that so put in the middle here so this angle is if you go here approximately 156 so it is 156 so this angle is 156 and this is out of 360 and we need percentage so multiply by 100 so again let's use calculator for this so 156 times 100 divided by 360 so this is 43.33 so 43.33 percentage so we can write down three significant figures that means we can write down here 43.3 percent now part three Joel spins the spinner 10% of the students guessed correctly which number did the spinner land on so 10% so that means 10 out of 100 and we need to find out out of 360 so this zeros are gone so we are left with 36 so which number did land on which number did the spinner land on 
so that means our angle is 36 so now you can see out of on this pie chart which one is 36 so 36 may be uh, this or this because this is the smallest part so if we look on 2 so this is less than 30 so this may not be the answer so this one if you see here this part is approximately 36 this is 35 and 36 so that means this is our answer landed on 5 so we will write down here in the answer 5 because we are asked which number did the spinner so we can find out first the angle then we can see which number is there on the pie chart question 4 part a a farmer has 45 horses and 12 cows write this as ratio of horses to cows give your answer in its simplest form so we need ratio of horses to cows so horses are 45 and cows 20 writing in simplest form divide both by 5 so we will get here 9 and 4 so our answer will be 9 ratio 4 part 2 uh, the farmer wants the ratio of horses and two cows equal to 5 to 3 he keeps 45 horses and buys some more cows work out the number of cows he must buy so the first thing is he need the ratio of horses to cows uh, to remain 5 ratio 3 so he has he kept 45 horses so inside of horses we are writing here uh, on the left hand side 45 and that how many cows he need to make the ratio 5 ratio 3 so just cross multiply you will see there uh, it is x times 5 equals to 3 times 45 divided by 5 divided by 5 so 15 uh, sorry 5 times 9 is 45 so x will be 3 times 9 27 so that means he's supposed to have 27 cows so he should have 27 cows but he already have 20 cows he already have 20 cows so how many more how many more cows he need to buy that means 27 minus 20 that is 7 so he has to buy 7 more cows to make ratio 5 to 3 part b 6 years ago the farmer invested dollar 3750 at rate of 4% per year compound interest calculate the total value of his investment after 6 years give your answer correct to the nearest dollar so uh, value of investment you know the formula principal 1 plus r over 100 power n that is number of years so principal is given to us 3750 1 plus rate of interest is 4 over 100 power 6 so we can use calculate directly for this calculator uh, before that let me just write it down we can write this down as uh, 0.04 power 6 so I can show you this with the calculator so it is uh, 3750 in bracket we have 1 plus uh, 0.04 or 4 over 100 4 divided by 100 bracket and this power is 6 the answer is 4 7 let me write it down here 4 7 4 4 point 9 4 uh, so give your answer to the nearest dollar nearest dollar we just need the dollar we don't need cents so that will be 4 7 4 5 so we can write it down here that's it now part 3 the farmer wants to spend his investment on buying goats goats cost dollar 126 each work out the maximum number of goats he can buy 
and the amount of money left over so we have two parts here first we need to find out the number of goods he can buy with the amount so he have uh, the number of goods he can buy is his investment value of investment here 4745 and one goat cost dollar 126 so when you divide this uh, 4 7 4 5 divided by 126 it is 37.65 so that means number of goods cannot be in fraction so 37 so this is approximately 37 uh, so the cost of 37 goods will be uh, so first we can write down this in the answer column number of goods is 37 so this cost will be uh, one cost good cost 126 times 37 so 126 times 37 is 4662 4662 so he has spent this much amount but he had 4745 so remaining amount remaining amount is 4745 minus 4662 so when you minus this uh, 4745 minus 4662 83 so this is 83 so that's how will you that's how the working can be done for this question Part C, the farmer grows carrots. In 2018, the selling price for carrots is $1.96 per ton. And in 2019, the selling price increased by 18%. Work out the increase in the selling price. So, increase from 2018 to 2019. Uh, so, it's very clear, very simple question. So, the increase here, it is 18% of $1.96. So that means 18 over 100 times 96. So let's calculate. It's uh, 18 times 96 and divided by 117.28. So 17.28 is the increase. Number 5. A sequence of pattern is made using lines and dots. The first three patterns in the sequence are shown below. Pattern 1, 2 and 3. And draw pattern 4 on the grid. So we need to draw the fourth pattern. So let's see. Uh, there are four patterns in the first one. I mean four lines. Then they added 3. Then again added 3. So that means we are adding three lines then we will see how many dots are getting added uh, so let me start from here so uh, first we need to write down one these one copy these there are three here and three down so these lines here so this is pattern three i just copied pattern three so dots one dot is here another one here here and here so in the next we are going to add three one two and three so it should be so that means this one so this dot will go here so this is pattern four okay now okay so this is done so part b complete the table pattern one two three four we are given number of dots two three so in the first pattern you can see there are two dots then three dots then there are four dots in the third one in the fourth one two three four and five so you can see that number of dot is one more than this so first pattern two number of dots two pattern three so one we are adding one here 
okay so here if this is the 10th pattern so number of dots will be 11 one more than the number of pattern now the number of lines number of lines here it is 4 7 10 so you can see the sequence it is adding 3 here or we can see that 1 plus 3 then 2 plus 3 is not working so that means they are uh, we are adding them by 3 so this will be 10 and this will be 13 but we need this 30 uh, the for the 10th pattern for for that we can find out we can use this uh, formula here so before we fill in this column we can go for further questions we will get the formula then it's easy for this uh, find an expression in terms of n for the number of dots in pattern n so number of dots you can see 2 3 4 5 so this is 1 greater than the number of pattern so it's very easy from here number of dots will be n plus 1 so simple n plus 1 so this we, we are done with this and then the number of lines in the pattern number of lines in the pattern you can see we have 4 7 10 13 so this is a sequence that is increasing by adding 3 okay so we can directly use formula for that which is a plus n minus 1 into t a is the first term n for the nth term d common difference is 3 times 3 so 4 plus 3 n minus 3 so this is 3 n 4 minus 3 is 1 plus 1 so the formula is 3 n plus 1 so from the we can use this formula now for this term here for here it will be 3 times n is 10 plus 1 so 3 n plus 1 so 3 times 10 is 30 plus 1 it is 31. So this is how we can complete this after getting the formula. Now part D, a pattern has 76 lines. Now work out how many dots are in each pattern. So the dots, the formula of the dots uh, we need to find out the dots. So dots and uh, the lines are interrelated there are 76 lines so formula for lines is 3n plus 1 which is 76 so 3n will be 76 minus 1 that is 75 3n divide by 3 divide by 3 so n is 25 so we got n 25 so now we need the number of dots so number of dots is always n plus 1 that is one more than that it is 25 plus 1 which is 26 so our answer will be 26